Hey everyone, thank you for listening to another episode of Spoiler Force Podcast. You can find more episodes on any major podcasting platform such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, and even on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe and make sure to follow and like Spoiler Force Podcast on Facebook. This is Wayne Algenio and you're listening to Spoiler Force Podcast. So this is episode 65 of Spoiler Force Podcast. My name is Ricky, and thank you for tuning in. This week's guest is someone that I'm very excited to have. Um, and I mean that because when I met, when I emailed him, I was not expecting to get a response. And the way how we even got this podcast going, uh, it was it's pretty comical. But I'm very glad to have him on the podcast. You may, you may have seen him eat with Randy Santel and Reina Huang. He's also... Uh, has eaten with the likes of Tucker Kobayashi as well. He does vlogs and he competes uh, in food competitions. So let me introduce my guest here, Wayne Alheno. Here you go. What's up, guys? How you doing? Welcome to Spoiler Force Podcast. Glad to be here. <laughs> you know, like um, we, when we were talking before we started recording, we, we were, I was uh, mentioning to you that I had to get you to respond through your YouTube live, and you know, I think I think that was pretty. Uh, I was not expecting you to remember that either. I just commented when you were doing your Q and A, and then uh, you're like, "Yeah, you're that spoiler first guy. I got to get back at you." Yeah, so it's funny. Like I was telling you earlier, I, I just forget things easily. Like, okay, I, I'll say in my head, "I'm gonna do something," and I was like, "Oh, you asked me to do a podcast," and I was like, "Yeah, I'll do it," and then I forget to message you like when to do it, and then I saw you on the my live stream. I was like, "Oh yeah, I got." We gotta, we gotta uh, get that going. Yeah, uh, I I think it's great what you're doing too, man. Like I, I really respect like your eating ability because like I follow so many of the other like big bigger names, you know, like Randy, Raina, Matt Stoney, uh, Beard Meets Food, and everyone that you've pretty much almost worked with. But for you, man, I I honestly f- started following your work after you did the uh, that Filipino challenge with that burger that with the maggots in it that's when i <laughs> that's when i really started following you because i always, i've always seen you around on youtube kind of like watched your videos here and there but after that incident i was like yep I, i'm gonna start following wayne <laughs> so that was interesting because i was gonna ask you what was like the first video you saw of mine but that's what got you hooked yeah that that's <laughs> what got me hooked like i because i i've seen like some of your stuff you know you, you do a lot of the, the fast food stuff and eating at home yeah and then you know with weston next to your to your cameras and stuff too so i, I always caught it caught it here and there whenever i was just scrolling through and then that that challenge man and then like you know your cousins like pointing out like you know the maggots are right there and oh my god <laughs> dude uh that, so that was crazy quick thing for everyone who's watching weston is my best friend my dog and he's usually in my videos and he has his own special little camera focused on him. So, but br- going back to that maggot burger, that was one of the few challenges that I've done uh, in another country that was in the Philippines. And that was by far the worst challenge I've ever done. And not just because there are maggots in the burger, but the burger itself tasted disgusting. <laughs> absolutely loaded it with the most ridiculous amount of mayonnaise and ketchup and that burger meat that they use it's a they use a a sausage meat that's called longanisa in the philippines and it's a sweet sausage so to add sweet meat to sweet mayonnaise and like just like sweet (laughs) ketchup was disgusting like i'm not a big vegetable person but the best part about that burger was the lettuce. <laughs> the oh <color>. my God. <laughs> so that's saying a lot for me. <clears throat> just just like looking at that texture of that burger, man, I was like, man, it just looks so dry. And then, you know, in the Philippines, I'm pretty sure it was really hot or humid there. And then the fact that the burger was undercooked too. Oh my God. Just yeah, everything I, added up. It was just like adding on to that experience. Like I had messaged them a few days before I like just to see if I could do the challenge. And I was like, uh, how big is the challenge? And they're like three kilograms, which is around seven pounds. And when I get there, they bring out this burger that they say it's seven kilograms. And I'm like, they're really trying to screw me over here. I, I probably would have failed that. 
because because they made it so big and it tasted disgusting because it's a three-person challenge and i'm like seven pounds i could do myself but uh when got the 14 pounds and i'm like okay i'm gonna need my cousins so luckily though if i didn't tell my cousins to eat with me i probably would have never noticed the maggots because i just eat and don't look or maybe i would have because i would have slowed down and be like what what the hell's moving in my burger now were you able to like get that money back or you didn't have to pay for it how how, did, how was uh, that aftermath yeah so you're supposed to pay for it if you don't finish but if you do finish you're supposed to win money so i think they purposely made it that big so i would fail uh but yeah because there was maggots in there well I, i'm not paying for this and yeah they they agreed to that uh because yeah not paying for a <laughs> rotten burger <laughs> yeah it's you know have you had any other experiences like that besides that was that just the worst one you've had that was the absolute worst uh and, and that was sad because you know i'm like oh i'm in in the homeland and i'm doing a, a challenge and it's funny because I was in my mom's part of the Philippines, which is like 12 hours away from Manila, which is the main city uh, in the Philippines. And, you know, I didn't expect there to be a food challenge like 10 minutes from her from her house in the Philippines. So I was all pumped up. But, yeah, that really ruined <laughs> that, that part. It's of always it. one of your own that does you dirty, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, you, you're still currently living in New York, too? Yes. I yeah. how, how, how is that, like, with COVID still going around? I mean, for me, it, it's gotten better. But, you know, it's still in the back of my head. Like, I, I'm just glad. Like, I work at a hospital as well. So to see that it's gotten a lot better at my place of work, it went from, you know, there, there was a board and said how many patients we had and how many patients with COVID were released and it's drastically like the amount of people we release has like maybe one a week now which is great which means people aren't catching it so I'm happy for that but now I'm worried about other states that are picking up in, in COVID cases and they're dealing what we dealt with uh in the beginning of our you know of New York's when it was at its worst so. Yeah, I think uh, where, I, where I live in, in Michigan, like it's, I don't think, I think it's gotten a little bit worse to pick back up actually. And it's all because like people aren't really, they don't want to wear their masks. Wear in their public. Mask. Yeah. So like we're having a, there's like a big dispute of that here in Michigan. Um, yeah. I recently got tested for COVID um, about like I think earlier this week from, from work. Um, and for the listeners, we're actually, when this episode's released, we're, we're, we're actually talking about like, a few weeks before this episode drops but uh yeah I, I got tested earlier this week and uh it came out negative which is good but, yeah but but uh man it was like it was kind of a scare like at first i wasn't thinking that it was like as bad i knew it was bad but when it comes to like affecting me or my, my siblings or people that i'm around with and that's when i started getting worried and then you know just going through that test it's and gross. just waiting for the for the uh results man it was it was um yeah it was pretty nerve-wracking now, yeah, uh, I, go ahead. Oh no, we can go. Okay, <laughs> no, because uh, you mentioned you worked in a hospital. I, I always wondered what you were doing besides the food, the eating the foods <laughs> and the vlogs. Because like uh, the way the way how you, you structured your videos, I'm like I'm pretty sure Wayne's also doing something else on the side besides the the foods and the vlogs. Now, um, your workplace they've been pretty lenient too with like seeing you do all the other stuff before COVID hit, like with all the traveling and everything. Uh, wait, lenient? How so? Like they know, like do you do you already have the your your traveling uh, dates planned and everything before you go out and compete, or they kind of just they well, they know beforehand right. and let you go? For me, I work mostly Monday to Friday. Uh, every fifth weekend I work, which was actually this weekend. Uh, that that's why I asked you if we could push back an hour because I got into work and it was just a mess, and I actually. I rarely do overtime and I always say no, but it was bad and stuff needs to be done for Monday. So it's like, uh, I got to get stuff done. But yeah, so usually contests are on weekends and uh, food challenges I could do whenever. So I, I've always, the scheduling is always pretty good. 
Uh, I do work evenings though, so it does suck when there's a contest in the evening and I can't go or I may call in sick. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they won't know because I won't post about it until <laughs> you know a little while later. Oh yeah, I did a contest. It could have been on the weekend. How does your uh, your coworkers think of like you actually competing? Like when you started doing it till now? Um, so I was working somewhere else when I first started, okay. uh, and they were all pretty like, "Oh, that's cool!" And and all the doctors at, at the facility <laughs> were, were cracking up, and and they're like, "We can't believe you do this, but that's cool." Some of them like were really interested in it, and some of them just you know laughed about it. Okay. <laughs> That's that's weird, but okay, but yeah, it, it really depends on the person. And then there's the the other type of person who's like, oh, that's gross, you know. <laughs> and I'm like, well, it's not for everyone, so. But yeah, how how does um uh, you know, I I I seen recently that you started adding uh like exercising and a workout regimen to your daily routine, and you know, obviously you've slimmed down, which we can tell or your fans and followers can tell you that you slimmed down. Now, how how is that has that been affecting your your eating uh, habits at all, or at least like the way how you train to eat too? Uh, so the big thing with eating is actually when you're slimmer, you can eat more. And when I started uh, trying to slim down this year, it was all exercise. And the reason why I actually tried to slim down is because I've never done Nathan's uh, on the Fourth of July. And I want to try to qualify for it this year. So it's like, okay, to get into my best eating shape, I've got to lose the weight. So it's like, all right, going to start exercising like crazy. Then COVID hit and I did a, is it 360, 360? <laughs> and I went from exercising five days a week with like sweatsuits on to just, um, whatchamacallit, changing my diet completely. So all my life, my weight has like always shifted. Uh, after college, I was at my heaviest at like 300 something pounds. I don't even know, after I hit 300, I stopped weighing myself. So it was pretty bad. And then like, yeah, right after college, I was like, well, I gotta lose weight. I wasn't doing anything. And I got down to like 190 something, 195. And I, so I know how to lose the weight and it affects my eating, just like I said earlier, it helps you eat more uh, because it's called the belt of fat theory. So when you have less fat around your gut, your stomach has more space to expand and it's not pushing against fat. So it's always a big misconception that, oh, the heavier set person is going to eat more than a skinny person, but it's quite the opposite where it's the person who's more athletic is going to be able to eat more. And I always say, uh, you know, a good reason like some eaters start or get into it is because they had a very sports oriented background. Like there used to be a, one of my friends was a boxer. And so he always ate a lot and that's why he could always eat a lot. Or um, I know another, a lot of bodybuilders can eat a lot for this reason. So they're used to eating it and then they do a food challenge and then they get into the whole eating scene. But uh, yeah, yeah, and you know, to add on to that too, like I, I like um, Furious Pete's one of the guys who implements that too with, with working out and eating uh, huge quantities of food. But you know, th does your diet? Do you have like a consistent diet before or after you do like a challenge? Like, do you kind of just make like let your body detox or rest before you even get back onto a challenge? Uh, when I'm gonna do a challenge, depending on the size of the challenge, if it's like five pounds, I could go in there uh, like it's a normal day. But if it's going to be something like maybe 10 pounds of food, I'll try to do a, a water stretch. Um, and what that is, is you basically chug a lot of water to help stretch out your stomach. And I'll do that maybe a few hours before the, the challenge itself, just to get my stomach loose and, and whatnot. Uh, but that's actually how most eaters train is by chugging a lot of water. Uh, it can be dangerous, so, you know, do it properly if you're going to do it. Uh, I guess learn how to do it also. Because <laughs> uh, yeah, you can yeah, really uh, harm yourself doing that. 
Yeah. So like I, the most I've done is like two gallons of water. Uh, and I didn't want to push past that because I'm like, ooh, this is a little sketchy now. <laughs> now, there was times like where you, when you were eating with Randy and you guys would do like two a days or I think like those um, kind of challenges. How, how did you prepare for those? Because I, I don't know how you guys could do like huge amounts of food twice a day yeah. like that. So I was not prepared for that at all. <laughs> I'm used to doing one challenge a week and that's it. And so to prepare for that, I was doing my water uh, training every day. Uh, I got close to two gallons uh, before the trip with Randy, just because I, you know, I want to keep up with him. Um, uh, I think actually that was I had a little more capacity than him at that point. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm used to doing those one challenges, one challenge a day a week, and when I experienced maybe the second day of the trip. I was just like, I feel like crap, like like so bad. I felt so bad that second day because we did one challenge the first day and then the second day we did two challenges and I done back-to-back -back challenges maybe once in my life, but it was like, I didn't do a challenge the day before. So I wasn't sure how I'd feel uh, doing a challenge maybe like just a few hours after doing the first one for the day. and surprisingly if you give it like four four hours you you've passed most of the food through where you can do another five pound challenges like we weren't doing any monster challenges back to back we're he was smart about that but by the end of that week i i, I was just felt like such crap and <laughs> there were a few things that i learned to do during that tri trip is like always have water with me because I felt dehydrated the whole time because all the sodium we consumed. Um, and yeah, just, I was always so hot at night or that second night, going back to that second night, I was just like, oh, I'm so thirsty and I don't have anything to drink. And my body was just was burning up because I guess it was trying to digest all the food I've eaten in the past two days. And so uh, I went into the shower and I was desperate and I was like, cooling down and I start drinking the water out of the shower head. I was like, oh, I just, I'm thirsty right now. And this felt so good. So yeah, the next day I was like, we got to go to a dollar store. And I, I need to buy a bunch of water for the trip. But yeah, I, I wasn't prepared for that. And when I got to experience that myself, it really gave me so much more respect for Randy because a lot of people like to try to crap on him or he's only doing these like five pound food challenges and you know they're saying it's not that big and i could do that myself and in my head i'm like try doing that every day and you'll you'll change your tune like this because yeah and, and it wasn't just doing back-to-back -back challenges because i felt like crap after every challenge but randy took the time uh to talk to everyone that came out to see him and he was signing autographs and i'm just like sitting in the corner i'm like oh I'm so <laughs> sleepy <laughs> and, and then to top it all off he he drove everywhere so you know just hats off to randy for doing what he does so, so much more respect for him that, that is great the fact that he's able to do all that while comp uh, doing the contest and stuff yeah. i don't know I, I don't think i could even i don't think i'd be considered enough to even just like talk to people right after i get done eating i'd leave and yeah. go, go, go to bed or something that's that's crazy he, he, he he's having full-on conversations i'm like i feel like i have more capacity than you but you he, he seemed fine after every challenge like some challenges he'll be like uh yeah i'm full but i was just like i'm out and like at, when he was driving i always knocked out in the car and took a nap <laughs> and he was fine so no yeah. When you, when you do these, um, when you do challenges like at, at a restaurant or versus at home, do you do, would you prefer doing it yourself at home, like the ones you normally do, just oh, cooking no. for yourself? I'd rather do them at a restaurant. There's so many pluses of doing it at a restaurant versus doing it at home. First, if you finish, it's free. Sometimes you get a T-shirt. Sometimes you get cash. I don't have to prepare the food. I don't have to <laughs> clean up. There's so many more positives. Uh, I'm not spending any money, uh, and yeah, the, like, yeah, all those pauses versus 
uh, like my last challenge that I'm going to put out uh, on Monday, it's a nacho challenge. So I had to go to the grocery store. I had to cook it. Uh, <laughs> I had to, to um, what you want to call it? I, I ate it. Um, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just easier at a restaurant. Plus, there's people watching you and, you know, they get shocked at what you're doing. And having even just like one person watch you motivates you to eat it. At home, you're just like, uh, yeah, it's just me and a camera. <laughs> and I really don't want to finish. And, and yeah, it's, I've been more motivated. Like, there's been some close calls at restaurant challenges where it's like, I'm going to go all out because I don't want to pay <laughs> for losing a challenge. And that's a big motivator. Uh, meanwhile, I'm at home. I'm like, yeah, I'm just giving up right now. <laughs> but yeah. What are your thoughts on like the, the comment commentators on your you know, YouTube channel, you know, saying like when you do it at home, it's like edited or, you know, like when, oh, when you, yeah, you know, saying like you're are, cheating and stuff. Yeah. There have been a lot of people who've said that and I, I go straight to them. I'm like, all right, let's sign a contract, put up 500 bucks. And if I can prove that I didn't cheat, then you pay me 500 bucks. And then they go, uh, uh, no, I don't want to. Cause yeah, I'll, I have, I'll send you my unedited footage and you know, you can't possibly cheat. He'll watch my unedited footage and see me cheating. No, it's not going to happen. It's like, I honestly don't care if I fail a challenge, which has happened, especially at home. But yeah, at a restaurant, yeah, no, I care. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever, I care. Whatever, I fail. What's it to me? Nothing. Now, do you like it when when you get compared to other uh, other eaters out there too? Like when they say like, you know, Stony could could do what you did much faster or stuff like that. It, it, no, it's so annoying because it's like, oh, Stony's done that like way faster. But why do you even try? And I'm like, well, then don't watch. Who gives a crap? Well, can I say crap? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, we can swear on here. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, like you had to. You, I'm like these people. Like, oh yeah, you love Stony that much. You want me to message him and tell him that you want to kiss his ass? <laughs> <laughs> that's what I say to these people. I was like, yeah, that's cool. You're you're gay for Stony. Not, nothing against gays. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, yeah, I really don't care. Your comments are pointless to me at that point. But, like, uh, I, I used to, like, I read these comments, like, not even just yours, but like, when they compare, like, you know, like we were saying, just Randy or, or, uh, or, or Matt Stoney or Beard Meets Food, like, everyone's always trying to compare you guys. And really, you guys are all doing the same sport. So yeah. you guys are all great in your own ways. But like to, I don't know. It's always like these these mob mentality people. Like oh, they, they no, always want to like cheer cheer their person or something. Like they're gonna get something out of it. The biggest comment I get about like Randy fans are like, "You eat so messy," <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, "Do you not understand?" I I try to tell them, I never really did food challenges. I was always doing eating contests. That was my, like I did do a few challenges in my lifetime. But before I started YouTube, I did maybe five food challenges in maybe 10 plus years. Meanwhile, in those 10 plus years, I've done over two, 300 plus contests. <laughs> and in an eating contest, you're not clean. You have to be messy. Yeah. So it, it took some adjusting and annoying comments where I try to eat better now <laughs> at, at food challenges. But there's still that animal in me that wants to go all out sometimes well i think yeah. that's like th those are the people that eat the most like the quickest too or the ones that just don't care like uh yeah. you know like you've worked with, uh, with reina and people don't like how she eats like how she'll like sometimes mash her food up and she'll just start yeah. eating it with her hands if you notice she's also changed in the way she's eating like she's so much cleaner now yeah <laughs> i think like, like, some of her past videos she's using more utensils now than just like yeah. mashing everything like, up ooh. You did a 360 on that, or she did. <laughs> but it's like we did a collaboration maybe a month or two ago, uh, this Burger King uh, family meal challenge. And I honestly wanted to see how fast she would do it. And then I see her video and she's eating clean. And I'm like, oh, oh man, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, like a lot of the, the Randy fans too, like they're always like saying how Randy eats everything clean. Like he's yeah. not as quick, but everything's like, 
you know, clean his he cleans his plate off. I don't know. I think it, competing and then doing the challenges, like you said, it, it, there's two different styles. It's, it, you can't you can't make everyone happy because yeah, if you, you eat too clean, take too yeah. much time, and then if you eat too quick or you eat quickly to to win, it's gonna be messy anyway. Yeah, yeah. I, I've learned there. Everyone always gonna have a difference in opinions, so I just try to go with the majority of people. <laughs> Who who comment and complain? <laughs> and, you know, while we're on this topic too, people complain about you feeding Weston, and wow. I, I man, those like I I'm a dog owner myself, so I get upset when I read those comments. Like, really, man? Like, I'm pretty sure Wayne knows what he's doing with this dog. It's not like he's just giving Weston anything. Yeah, so I get a mix of comments with that. Either I'm feeding him too much, or I'm not feeding him enough. Stop teasing the dog. <laughs> Why is the dog in the video? And I'm just like, oh, the, the worst ones are like the people who complain, oh, I'm going to stop watching because you don't give your dog enough food. And I I literally have to, I comment on those people saying, uh, his vet watches my videos and he said, uh, I need to cut back on that or I'm going to kill him. So I, I have cut back on a lot of the, the food I give him. And yeah, it's just like these people don't know any better. And then they still get mad at me. I was like, okay, you want me to kill my dog. But no, I'm not going to do that to make you happy. <laughs> but it's, it's like yeah. the, the same people who get mad at you for not feeding Weston. And then when you feed him, they get upset regardless. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I just find that so ironic because, you know, like they they want to look out for Weston. But then the way how yeah. they say it, it's not even like it's really rude. Yeah, I don't know. And, and for me, like I said, I'm a, I'm a dog owner, so like I I even give my dogs food off the table. Yeah, and it, as, as long as you don't give them like massive quantities of it, they'll, yeah. they'll be okay. Yeah, it, the worst thing though is when those same people s complain and they're like, "Yeah, that's animal cruelty and whatnot." And <laughs> I'm like, "You guys are ridiculous!" Because he came from a a, a rescue. I rescued him, and he was abandoned from his uh, previous owners. I'm like, oh, and, and I'm torturing him? I was like, you guys, like, it's crazy. I, I just laugh at them. Uh, it's just ridiculous. So what, what made you decide to add Weston to your videos? Like, um, was he just around the whole time, every time you were eating? He, he, I'm kind of trying to think. Uh, when did I start my YouTube channel? I had Weston when I started my channel, and I think he was just there, and people commented, and they're like, oh, we love the dog. He's cute, etc. I'm like, well, maybe I should always put him in my videos. But then there are people who are like, oh, I can't stand your videos because of the dog. I'm like, <laughs> like yeah. Like, well, I'm not going to please everyone. But, so pretty much Weston's been you know, next to you every time then when you've been eating. Yeah, I'm trying to think back. Or at least like most of the time. Since... Yeah, no. most of the time he is. I think that's like that's a good like niche to have too because it it makes you stand out when you when you're doing your challenges like everyone's always doing something like whether they're doing food challenges or contests like there's something you have to do something to make your content stand out and that definitely Weston says helped helped you with your channel with that because not everyone knows like okay so Wayne has his dog next to him and then you always have like the the edited comments of Weston and all the little yeah, that, that's widget, uh, widgets. I was like, what can I do to make Weston funnier? <laughs> so I started adding these these bo thought bubbles of what he's thinking. You know, I put funny comments. I, th I think they're funny. So, yeah, people enjoyed them. If you like podcasts like me and want to start your own, use Buzzsprout. Buzzsprout is a very effective and easy way to begin your podcasting journey. With easy-to-use tools, Buzzsprout can help you get your podcast to major podcasting platforms like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and more. You can view stats, create audio clips, and even have your own podcasting website. Buzzsprout has helped hundreds of thousands of people to begin their own podcast like myself, and you can find ideas, tips, tricks, video tutorials to better your own podcast. Follow the link in the description to start your own podcast today, and once you sign up, you'll get a $20 Amazon gift card. This lets Buzzsprout know that I sent you, and this also helps support Spoiler Force Podcast. Happy podcasting. Do you struggle with eating junk food and late night snacking? Well, I've been using FNX Sports Rebalance Super Greens, and I've been able to control my eating habits, get my daily vitamins, fiber, and loose fat around my stomach area. The Rebalance Super Greens comes in multiple flavors and is easy to use by just mixing the supplement in water. 
You can drink this anytime during the day and feel energized without any groggy after effects. Use the code SPOILERFORCE, all one word, S-P-O-I-L-E-R-F-O-R-C-E, and get 15% off your very first order. Now, uh, I know with COVID going around and these contests are either, you know, very limited or the the, the, the diners are like, you know, keeping everything everything at like social distancing. Have you gone back and done any challenges at all or are you just sticking to the whole stay at home routine? I haven't done any food challenges at all. Um, it sucks because there was this one challenge I was going to do right before lockdown or I didn't know we were going to lock down. And it was actually the very first food challenge I ever did. Um, there's a restaurant called JNR Steakhouse and they have a few locations and they had a 76 ounce steak challenge uh, going around, but they got rid of it. And then for like their 10 year anniversary, they brought it back. And I was like, you know, it would be really cool to film that doing, you know, my first challenge again. But then lockdown happened and they, they have opened back up, but uh, they're not doing their challenge right now. So that was unfortunate. Uh, but back to traveling and doing challenges, there is actually a, a burger place that I was tagged in. Um, that is going to be having a burger challenge soon. And I, you know what? I really want to do a challenge because it's just, you know, in a restaurant, not in my home. Because I, I miss that. You know, I mean, I know there is COVID, but, you know, I think I haven't eaten out yet. Like, I haven't dined out since the, the lockdown. But I feel like I, I've been going to work every day and I was in a hospital filled with COVID and I I think I will keep myself safe um, as long as I maintain my social distance and, you know, I do that challenge away from people, don't have anyone near me, like, yeah, please keep your distance while I eat <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> I should be all right. I, I think I think that'll work out uh, well if they regulate, um, you know, the restaurants and stuff, make sure everything's clean and wiped down. Um, because I, even like with some of the other competitors, you know, even Randy's doing like some of the stuff out and at diners and stuff like keeping his distance as well. Um, but I don't know. I, I feel like that with COVID, it's so unpredictable because like the waves and people are waiting to see what what's going to be coming next. And then not just COVID and then like all the other, you know, social issues that's happening too. And I'm pretty sure in New York, that stuff's still going on. And um, oh, yeah, you, you, you don't live near the city, do you? Uh, it's about if I take the train, it's about 45 minutes uh, driving in, about the same. Uh, I used to work in the city, so it, it's not the closest to me, but it, it's manageable to get there by subway. But yeah, it, it, it was crazy because I had friends who Ubered and the, like they saw what was going on uh, during all the protests and the riots and everything. And they're like, it is scary out there. You know, but a good thing a lot of it has calmed down. So, yeah, I don't. I don't think in Michigan we've experienced too much of the like the looting or the rioting. There was like we had some peaceful protest. Uh, there was one incident in downtown Detroit where, sadly, someone was shot, but it wasn't related to the riots. It was something else related. So yeah. they they had to like disperse that really quick. And then uh, I don't know. I, I felt like. A lot of the what ha, what's happening with all the the riots and the looting and all that it was really out of hand for sure. And the way how the media yeah. was like showing that and showcasing that too, and then it just stirs everyone up. And then now yeah. like everyone's trying to just stay home and be safe. Yeah, and it, it's it's crazy. I, I don't usually get into political stuff on my channel, but it it's like if someone's loot, looting, they're really not there for any protest. They're they're there for one thing. They're they're making they're trying to profit out of a bad situation, plain and yeah. simple. Like they're not protesters, so don't you know compare them to protesters. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what a protester would do. <laughs> but uh, I, yeah, I saw basically every side of, of everything going on because I also had had uh, friends who are cops, and it was scary for them. It's like, yeah, it you know you never know. You go into work if you're gonna have to fight or whatnot you know you don't know what's gonna happen uh so that was pretty crazy and yeah uh he 
he'd go into work and we we're always worried about him so we always uh ask him to keep us updated oh by by we i'm like talking about my uh dog park group <laughs> uh, that's how i met him at the dog park <laughs> yeah i, I want to take this back a little bit in, you know i in the introduction I, i've mentioned that you've gotten to eat and eat with tucker kobayashi how was that experience like because kobayashi is one of the guys that i grew up and he was one of my one of my idols growing up because you know especially being asian too and the fact that he was doing something and beating people at like eating and just being <laughs> a well-known name in the states how was that experience like just meeting him kobe just like you was like my idol like oh my gosh this is so cool that he's doing this but he's also kind of the reason why i i started eating in maybe 2004 like i did my first contest ever and i don't think he was on the nathan scene yet i think it was 2005 i'm not sure or maybe he was already but anyways i'm doing like 16 hot dogs in 12 minutes at the time and here he comes and he does like 50 hot dogs in 12 minutes and, uh, and i'm like how how do you compare to that you know or how do you get better back then i didn't know you could train and get better so i kind of gave up on eating uh back in 2005 like all right this is not for me because i'm never gonna hit like that level um but then yeah fast forward 10 10 years no 2012 i joined this local pizza eating contest and i did good i came close to three pro eaters like i was one slice away from being in the top three uh which led me into doing more contests which uh then i started getting better and then it led me to meeting kobe for the first time where he was doing a hot dog contest on the fourth of july and i was asked to participate in it and you know that was the first time i'm meeting kobe and i'm just like this is so cool right now <laughs> you know i'm in this room uh of a hotel with the other eaters and kobayashi and i'm just like you know this is the man right here he revolutionized eating for everyone he's the game changer um and yet after i got to know him he's just such a super nice guy uh you know just super polite <laughs> very japanese polite hello and as the years went on i'd see him at more things uh uh, there was this one clam eating contest that I usually do every year where he's a guest judge. And, you know, after that contest, he invited me to, to eat with him and his uh, now wife. And it was cool. He was like, you know, I'm just me, but you asked me to eat with you. So I guess we're, we're buddies now. <laughs> and that was really cool. And then he, he treated and I'm like, you didn't have to, but thanks. <laughs> That's awesome. I made sure to treat the next year. I, I took the bill from him. But uh, yeah, it's he's just a normal dude and super kind. He doesn't let being you know that super famous eater ever get to his head. So he was always down to earth, which I, I really appreciated. Yeah, I, I saw that your your vlog, uh, not like a, last week I was rewatching some of the stuff and I, I saw that where you and Kobayashi got to eat together at the uh, at that pier were the the clam competition and I, I think that's really cool though that to be able to to sit down with them and not just see kobe as like the, the professional eater but just to hang out with them as like a friend and i thought that was a really yeah. cool experience that you recorded and you know i i i don't know i i, have, I still think kobe's one of the best out there i i know that oh yeah definitely you know, well i think he he retired so he definitely if he trained again I, I don't know where his capacity is right now, but if I retired, I wouldn't be training. <laughs> and it, you know, once you stop training, it goes down quick. <laughs> but I, uh, I think that's that's crazy too, though. Like how you know how we've seen him from the beginning to up until where he's at now, where he's just you know being a social media presence. But I, I really respect his work too. And, and you know, yeah. like like I mentioned earlier, not there wasn't a lot of like you know Asian superstars for us out there to see and relate to and. We took yeah. advantage of, of what Kobayashi was like. Screw it, man! He's eating. We're we're, we're on that uh, same hype train as him too. And yeah. I just remember like seeing him like eating Nathan's and even like the earlier years where he was in Japan eating those crazy contests yeah. and competing with the other eaters out there. I I don't know, man. Like he's that guy's freaking 
special, man. I I really wish like I, I can meet the guy one day. Um, but yeah, man, like just like seeing your experience, I was really, really jealous of that too. I was like, man, that's <laughs> that's such an awesome experience. Yeah, it, it's always cool. Like when I run into him at like an event, or there was actually this one event I did. It was a ramen eating contest for um, a dating website <laughs> called East Meets East. And I'm like, what is this? I, you know, I'll go do the contest because I thought that would have been hilarious. And then I find out Kobe's a guest judge there. And I, I, he's, he's, I get there and he's like, oh, you're, what are you doing here? I'm like, I'm here to compete and win a date. <laughs> so, but yeah, it was a, it's good seeing him like unexpectedly as well. Yeah. But yeah, he's even asked me like after contest, what do you want to come? hang out in the city or Brooklyn is where they're living and I like drink. But it's, I was always like, oh, I got all this food in me. <laughs> I'm tired. But uh, I appreciate it. <laughs> the, the asking me to come hang out. Now, um, you also do like your, your vlog channels as well. Like your, your videos where you go out and with friends and go and like eat and like just do like a lot of sightseeing and stuff like that be uh, before all this COVID stuff happened. Uh, there was one, I think there was one of the videos that you went to a convention, like an anime convention or like a comic convention. Um, yeah. Which one was that? Uh, this was in Virginia, and I was visiting uh, my friend Darren Eats. <laughs> so, short, long story short, he was supposed to go with this girl, and she kind of blew him off. And he was like down in the dumps about it, and he had an extra ticket. So, I was like, well, I'm off that week, uh, so I'll come down and visit you, and we'll go to the anime convention. <laughs> and that's how it turned out. And, and then I brought my uh, other friend, Macho. So it was three of us, and yeah, that was my... Uh, I've been to uh, New York City Comic Con, but that was my first time competing <laughs> in, in, a, in a convention for some show, like costume show. <laughs> yeah, you uh, went as like what? Uh, was it like Nacho Libre or like some sort yeah. of... <laughs> uh, it was just some makeshift costume that that we did real quick and yeah, that we all did like really quick costumes and, and we had a blast you know are you, are you into that stuff like all the the nerdy stuff like that the comics i'm and definitely the... into like anime but i usually don't care to go to like comic cons it's like uh like new york city comic con is awesome because i like seeing everyone's costumes but other than that i don't really care to go to like the the talks that they have and whatnot it's like oh you know but yeah it's really just for me it's seeing the cool uh costumes that people wear but, yeah like co cosplay is a, a big thing too and like there's some cosplayers from like new york like uh or that, that they were from new york i don't think they lived there anymore but like uh, one of them's like stella chu she was a cosplayer from there now she i think she she relocated to California, but she was from there, and she's actually one of the great cosplayers that I follow too. And you know, like the the artwork in in New York, I mean, everyone's like really good. I had a friend yeah. that went there uh, not too long ago. He he took tons of photos with different cosplayers, and I, I think like New York's well, New York's definitely on my list for sure uh, because yeah. San Diego is pretty much damn near impossible. So <laughs> I might as well just go to New York Comic Con. It's more easier that way. Yeah, but now yeah, you definitely should check it out. Oh yeah, for sure. Because like, um, I also like one, my friend. I went there. He he went the year the the Joker film was released to New York. Oh, Congress. so there was tons of. I think that's the year I went, and there was just tons of Jokers everywhere. It's, yeah, it's hilarious. One thing that you do in your videos too is you sing in your car, and you like, <laughs> car, like a car, car for karaoke kind of thing. How did that happen? Was it so, just something that you did, or and it caught on? It, it's actually kind of like when you're talking about my food blogs, it's it came in my head like, what can I do for videos that I enjoy? And it's like, I call them, well, my feasting with friends, those are my food blogs. It's like, well, I love eating out with my friends, so I'm gonna film it. And it was the same thought process. It's like, I love singing in the car, so why don't I sing in the car and film it? Cause I think it's dumb, but hilarious <laughs> in my opinion. So it's something I've done my whole life. Uh, whenever I drive and there's someone in the car with me, I make them sing. I will literally pull over and say, if you don't sing, I'm not going to drive. <laughs> <laughs> I'll mess up like that. But yeah, it's just something fun. And 
I remember when I used to roll around in my minivan and I had seven people in the car. Imagine having seven people in the car singing. It's like the most hilarious thing ever. <laughs> so I was like, I always have fun with it. So why not share what I enjoy doing with everyone? Is That's how it came about. But, now, yeah. What are your thoughts on the uh, the whole mukbang thing? I know you guys were like the food competitors. You guys are like doing the, the like the time challenges and stuff. But now like mukbangs being so big on on the YouTube scene, everyone's just eating normally in front of the camera now instead of like racing or trying to complete the time. Uh, have you tried it or have you considered to transitioning into that at all? When I first started my channel, I actually thought about just doing mukbangs. Uh, which I like to say mukbang because I, I think it's funnier when you say it like that, mukbang. But I, I thought about it for a while. It's like, I'm going to start a YouTube channel. Do I want to do it like that or do I want to do like the way I do videos now? And it's like, I, I'm not a mukbanger. I'm a competitive eater, so I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to post food challenges. I'm going to post eating contests. And sometimes every once in a while i've been like experimenting with it or like my kfc video was completely mukbang style where it was still like a ridiculous amount of food but there was no fast forwards it was me talking to the camera the whole time usually i'll like shorten the video because i feel like who wants to watch 45 minutes of me eating but apparently there are people <laughs> who want to see that so but uh, yeah, I still don't think it's for me. Like, I want to do my challenge, and that's it. I, if I could do restaurant challenges like Randy does, that would be my like most favorite thing to do. But like, I don't have that many challenges around me, and working full time, I don't have the opportunity to travel like Randy did. Uh, but no. especially now, I can't travel at all. <laughs> But, um, you know, before before everything was affected by COVID, have you considered that too? Like just trying to do what Randy did and go around and do challenges like that? I mean, yeah, I've thought about it where like, it's like I've wanted to take like a month off of work and then like do challenges and travel like he did. But it's like at most I can only take two weeks off of work. And so it just really, it would be more like, all right, should I just quit my job and try to do YouTube or should I just try to do like some videos here and there? Like, I mean, I would have loved to. And especially I got it since I got Weston, it's really, you can't just up and leave. You have responsibility. Right. So that was the other factor in like, I can't just do what Randy did or does. Uh, but yeah. Now, do you do like any uh like crowdfunding at all, like Patreons and stuff like that to let I, fans? I don't. I always felt weird like someone paying me money for like videos <laughs> I do. I mean, I make some money off of YouTube, not the best, but <laughs> I mean, there's it's there, and, and I'm happy with that. But uh, yeah, like even when I do a live stream and someone uh like does a super chat, I feel like a little weird about it. Like, yeah, I'm just not used to used to that stuff or like even when someone wants to send me something in like a p.o box i'm like like send me something personally i feel a little weird about it but like if you want to send cookies to wes and yeah go for it but i just I don't know, i've always been that person like you know you don't have to send me anything personally but uh someone did send me something and wesson which was really cool uh, i think it's actually right here I'm not like where I'm, I'm in boxes. Let's tilt the camera up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this was like one of the coolest things I've ever received because someone sent me this wood uh, picture frame of me and Weston. They like went on my Instagram and had this printed out on a on a wood board, which is super thoughtful. And it's got Wayne and Weston in the back. And yeah, I like you know things like this. Like really make me love doing what I do, you know. But yeah. So do, do you get uh, weirded out if people recognize you in public? Like that's no, how you know. I'm always for it. Like I I was recognized in the gym. Uh, actually, this year it was funny. I was recognized twice in the gym in one day, uh, 
And I'm looking at this person who recognized me and I'm like, well, I've been going to this gym for 10 years and I've always <laughs> seen you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you watch my videos now, so that you're like, oh, shit, you're that guy. And I'm like, yeah, you're that guy I've seen you for 10 years. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's cool. Like, one time I was going into work, and this uh, teenager, it, it looked like he was having a rough day, like, coming from the hospital. I don't I don't know what was going on, but uh, he's like, oh, you're that guy on YouTube. And I'm like, yeah, 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 what's up, man? Is that, you know, I don't. I love that those experiences. I try to get a picture with these people, and, and whatnot. I'm like, I appreciate you guys for watching my channel and supporting me. Like, it's, just, it's awesome. So I never get weirded out. Uh, I think, except I think that's I, great though. That, that fans still like they can recognize you out in public like that, yeah. and uh, like you know, I, the only time I get weirded out is like someone yells my name out, and I'm like driving or something. I'm like. Or, or someone honks at me, and I'm like, What's, why is this person honking at me? Like, <laughs> what, what did I do? You got a problem with me? <laughs> have, but, have you yeah. been, um, like, have you been called out by, like, your old YouTube? They go, was it Wayne Wonder? Like, anyone ever call you that before? Not really. I, I, yeah, I'm trying to, like, lean away from that because it's, like, it really just didn't click with people. <laughs> I wish it did, but uh, it, it didn't. So I'm like, all right, let's just use my regular name. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think uh, you know to to be able to just be on be a presence on YouTube and to to just affect people through your videos. Like, I, people love watching like vlog type stuff, seeing what you do in your daily life. And I think for for your videos, I mean, like you make it really down to earth, which is why like a lot of folks like your content. You know, just yeah. being at home with West and cooking at home and just talking to the camera. And you know, when you were for, when you started doing that stuff, was it pretty awkward though? Like just eating in front of the camera because I get super mm -hmm. self conscious when I eat. So like uh, I don't think I could do that in front of a camera. For me, it, it wasn't awkward. It, it only felt awkward when I was like outdoors, like doing a, a food vlog thing, and there's like other people there. That's like I always try to be respectful of the other people. Like, oh, here's this guy filming himself while we're eating. You know, what a <laughs> jerk. <laughs> it was I I could try to do it quick, but yeah. So I, I don't care if I do it at home. I just try to be. I care when I'm outside and I don't want to bother anyone with what I'm doing because, you know, we're all out to have a good time. But uh, that I've, I've done that. I'm, I'm pretty comfortable uh, filming wherever. And, and you know, on, on, to add on to that filming outside and stuff, there was one video you did with another friend. It was like that 30,000 calorie cheat day. And you oh. guys were just... <laughs> that, uh, that was uh, with a competitive eater... Yes, a pinonym from uh, Finland. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, in that one day, I felt like how I felt halfway through the trip with Randy. <laughs> I saw that video and I was like, "You guys, the first thing you guys ate was was a lot already. Was it a uh, Jollibee, right? You guys had no, that. We, we had the donuts from uh, I forget Donut Planet because those are so good. Um, you guys ate a crave case at the park. <laughs> like, oh my god, man! Like uh, the crave case itself would last me for the rest of the day already. And the yeah, fact you guys eat more after that too. That was like crazy for a cheat day. Yeah, it's it. What made it crazier is like we did our cheat day and we didn't pick super high calorie stuff. Like a lot of people will do shakes, like just super high high calorie stuff to hit that ten thousand mark. We ate like really solid foods that you really had to add up those calories, um, but it was a fun day with with uh, Yese. But I was like, bro, I don't ever want to do a cheat day. Again. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like such crap, man. But uh, yeah, and I was driving everywhere that day, and I was just like, uh, we even had like a midday break where we just took a nap for like a good hour. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was right after White Castle, but yeah, it, it was really fun for him because he that those were a lot of foods he never tried, and it was me showing him like the things I like to eat in New York. So I was glad I was able to showcase these things to him because he loved it. Uh, he loved the donuts, which I I love those donuts also, and he never had White Castle, so. I was like, let me show him what drunk American food is. <laughs> uh, 
And then we had that artichoke pizza, which he loved. Uh, he really enjoyed the Jolly Bee, and that's like a double whammy for me because that's my culture, and you know that's just something that we have here in America as well. Uh, yeah, it's a fun. I, day. I've never uh, tried Jolly Bee before. Like I, I think Ooh. I've only, I've only seen it because of you guys. Like because <laughs> you guys eat it, but I've never. I don't think I don't think I've seen one in Michigan. Um, yeah, it, it's still growing in the states. Uh, in California, it's everywhere. It, it's really dependent on who has the biggest Asian population. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a ton of them in California. They were always ahead of the game. Um, but yeah, it didn't come into New York maybe ten years ago, and then we finally got a second one in the city uh, like two years ago. But yeah, it's growing. It's just. It's starting to get more popular. It was always the number one fast food chain in the Philippines, and then they finally decided we're going to start pushing in, in the States, which is cool. So, Wayne, before, you, uh, before we wrap things up here, was there any uh, shout-outs or plugs you'd like to say on the podcast? Uh, if you guys want to check me out, uh, I'm pretty sure you'll leave a link to the description or link to the channel in the description, so check out my YouTube, which is Wayne Alhenio. And yeah, you can find all my other links to social media, but YouTube's the most important one. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I'll have uh, all the uh, the links in the description for like the YouTube video and on uh, when I post like the, the clip on, on Facebook and all that stuff too. Um, but again, man, thank you so much, Wayne, for uh, for being on the podcast here. I, I've had a great time, you know, like, you know, just seeing your content for these past years has been really like motivating for me too. And it's, it's great to be able to collaborate with another uh, Asian content creator too, because I, I want to push that out there and uh, you know, got to start representing for us too, man. You know, it's hey, going to be great. But uh, thank you for having me. And yeah, it was fun chatting with you and I hope everyone enjoyed this podcast. Yeah, man, and also if you if you ever want to jump back on, let me know, dude. I'll I'll make time for you for sure, man. <laughs> yeah, for let, sure. Let all my guests know that if they ever want to jump back on, I'll make time for you guys. And uh, yeah, I mean th this has been great, Wayne. Again, thank you so much. I, I can't say it enough. And uh, for those who are listening, uh, this will be available um, around like the end of August. So by that time this is released, then you know for the ones who are listening, that the dates will be different um, from when we record today versus when it's dropped um and also just again make sure to like share subscribe to wayne's content and continue to support his content along with the spoiler force podcast and uh yeah so this is episode 65 thank you guys so much for watching and listening uh, and uh what, one more thing like uh so i definitely would love to jump back on with you again how about people leave comments uh about questions that they want to ask and then we can ask them in a future podcast Oh, oh, you know, speak, bring, not to bring that up. The next time, if you, the next time we do this, I'll, I'll, I'll try to make this uh, live on Facebook and on Twitch, because like I, I've been experimenting with that too. So that way, fans can jump in and watch live as we podcast too. So I think that'll be really good for uh, for the next uh, for your return episode. All right, cool. Sounds good. All right. So again, you heard that, folks. We're gonna try to make this work and go live uh, sometime soon. Uh, until then, continue to support our content. And uh, this is episode 65. Thank you guys and have a great day. Deuces. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to follow, like, share, subscribe, and rate Spoiler Force Podcast. For comments, questions, or criticism, you can email me at rickyvang92 at gmail.com or message me on Instagram at instagram.com slash rickyvang92.